Hi, everyone. Uh, today, I want to talk about monitoring. And we have seen quite a few really great projects over the last few days that really help you setting up Kubernetes clusters easily. But we don't have the same kind of stuff available for basic plumbing to actually keep your cluster running, for example, in monitoring. So um, there are a few challenges when you want to monitor a Kubernetes cluster, because it's just an environment which is way more dynamic than anything we've experienced before. So first of all, you're breaking up your monolithic applications into microservices. And then you horizontally scale these microservices. So now you have, instead of a few static uh, instances of your application, uh, thousands of pods distributed across uh, nodes in a way that you can't even understand anymore. So we just have a lot of stuff to monitor. And it's constantly changing, because Kubernetes also enables you now to basically do several rollouts of new software versions every day and constantly scale up your applications horizontally. And it can even now help you scale your entire cluster um, based on the capacity currently needed. So I don't have these things here. Um, so if you want to monitor your horizontally scalable services, um, you want a high-level overview of what's happening. And if you just can inspect a single port, this doesn't really help you, because that's the dimension along which Kubernetes allows you to be failure tolerant. So if a certain port is not reacting anymore, that's fine. It's not impacting your user in general. So your monitoring system must be able to give you this high-level overview um, to determine whether your service is actually giving your users the appropriate experience. But if there's a problem impacting your service users, you must actually be able to drill down into all sorts of dimensions, because it's quite a complex system. So maybe your application is buggy. Then you must be able to determine which requests are actually triggering these erroneous responses. Um, but maybe just a certain cluster node is failing, which will impact um, pods across many different services. And you must be able to look at the monitoring data from all different angles to determine where you actually have to now fix the problem. So let's see if Prometheus can actually address all these points. Um, Prometheus is a pull-based monitoring system, initially developed at SoundCloud. But nowadays, it's developed by many different companies. And it actually shares a common heritage with Google, uh, Google's um, internal Borg system, because Borg came with the monitoring system Borgmon, which was largely, uh, largely to its an inspiration for very, quite a few concepts we have in Prometheus nowadays. And the most important one of these is the multidimensional data model. So imagine you want to instrument your application with a counter for HTTP request total made to your application. And quite naturally, whenever you get a request, you just increment this counter by one, uh, and all is well. But now you want to have more insight into what's actually happening. So you want to know what kind of request was made. So you add another dimension. In this case here, uh, we have a path label, which now tells us which uh, parts of your application was actually requested. And soon you want to add further dimensions. So for example, the return status code or the done, uh, the use request method. And you can quite easily see how this ends up with hundreds of individual counters for one single metric. And we call this individual um, points time series. And if you multiply this by the total number of metrics you have for a single application, and you multiply it again by all the uh, pods running in this application, and you multiply this again by all the different services you have, you quickly see that you end up with millions and millions of time series, even for a fairly reasonably sized infrastructure. So you need a monitoring system that's really able to handle this huge amount of data. And Prometheus was actually designed for that. So Prometheus scrapes this really fine-grained data and stores it in this raw manner. So we don't do any pre-aggregation on write so that all these dimensions are still available to you when you want to query and investigate. And querying is really important, of course, right? Um, so let's say we want to figure out what 99th percentile latency is for my individual um, HTTP passes across my service. And as I said before, you don't want to know this for every port. You want to know this across your entire service. So here I have a metric, which represents a histogram bucket for my request latencies. And now I can quite easily aggregate um, by preserving the past dimension and the dimension indicating which bucket I'm talking about. And then I hand this down into the histogram quantile function, which then allows me to calculate any arbitrary percentile of this latency service-wide on the fly. And what I get is this really nice and meaningful overview of just a few points indicating what the current 99th percentile latency is um, spread out by uh, request pass. And these queries directly translate into your alerting as well. So we can just take this query and add a threshold of one seconds, and then you have an alert that will notify you as soon as any particular endpoint uh, stops responding in less than one second. 
and another example is here. So let's say we have a metric which tells us how many free bytes there are on any particular uh, hard drive on any particular node in your cluster. And you can look at the last hour of data and then make a linear prediction. So if the current behavior continues, what will happen in four hours? And that uh, allows us now to check, okay, if the number of free bytes in four hours will be less than zero, the disk is full. And we can actually now wrap this into an alerting rule and Prometheus will now notify us as soon as this condition is true, which gives us then uh, about four hours to react and fix either the cause or, for example, extend the hard drive size. And this is one single alerting rule which actually allows you to cover every single hard drive in your entire infrastructure. So apparently Prometheus is quite good at modeling um, time series and helping you to get this high-level overview and also allowing you to drill down if you need to. But now we have to solve the issue of having just so many targets we have to monitor individually in, inside of our cluster. And we solve this problem by directly talking to the Kubernetes API server. And we can just get an initial set of things that can be monitored, but then there's this constant change going on. And to deal with that, we just place watches on the API server, which notify us immediately as soon as anything changes. So if you scale your deployment and a new pod gets created, Prometheus will be immediately notified and can immediately start monitoring this pod as well. And the same goes for um, scaling a deployment down. So if a pod goes away, Prometheus will immediately know and don't alert you that a certain pod that ex it thinks will exist is no longer there. And this allows us to basically keep always in sync with your API server, and that's basically the most high-level overview of your entire infrastructure you can get. And this actually allows us now to go even further. So by being a pool-based monitoring system and pulling our target information ourselves, we have access to all this meta information. So we don't just get an address from which we can get metrics via HTTP calls. We also now know more about this address. We know to which pod it belongs and which labels this pod has and to which services this pod belongs and in which, which name it's running. And then we can take all this meta information actually and enrich our metric data we get from the application by further dimensions. So the application provides us with the base metric and its internal dimensions and we just add, for example, the namespace or the pod name as a further label. And we can then use both external and internal dimensions later on in our queries to, to aggregation and filtering as we, uh, as we need. So Prometheus seems to address all these problems kind of nicely. So now let's try to get up uh, basic cluster monitoring. And this starts out with all these different components we see here. So we have etcd, which is the most important part. If etcd is unhappy, you are unhappy um, because it holds the entire persistent state of your Kubernetes cluster. And then you have, of course, your, of course, your nodes. And nodes don't expose metrics in the Prometheus uh, metric format, but the node exporter is a small utility which you can deploy as a daemon set and then it will collect all sorts of metrics from your operating system and make it available to Prometheus. And then, of course, you have the kubelet, and the kubelet is the local agent of Kubernetes running on every cluster node, and this one exposes metrics about its internal uh, state. So, for example, whether it can talk to the API server or not. And the same goes for actually any other Kubernetes components. So we have the API server, the controller manager, um, the scheduler, and all these exposed metrics about um, their internals. And lastly, there's kube state metrics. And kube state metrics is a fairly new project it's just a small utility which allows you to expose business logic metrics of Kubernetes um, in, a, in a metric kind of way. So for example, a deployment is not something real like memory, it's just like this abstract concept of your cluster. But you can actually expose metrics on it. So you can say um, how many desired replicas are there in my particular deployment. And you can also expose metrics on um, what the cluster's point of view is of how many of these replicas are available or unavailable. And you can then use these metrics later on to build alerting and dashboarding to, for example, notify you uh, when a deployment got stuck. And lastly, we have C-Advisor. And C-Advisor uh, is pretty much like Node Exporter, just at the container level. So it gives you the same kind of metrics just for every single container running in the entire infrastructure. And if you combine all these together, it's actually quite a good picture of metrics across uh, of our entire cluster. And the, if you get all these metrics, Actually, we are pretty complete if it comes to monitoring the cluster itself. Um, so luckily for us, these boxes here all expose 
uh, their metrics in the Prometheus format already, simply because Kubernetes as well as etcd shows this format to be uh, the way how they expose metrics. So we merely have to now point Prometheus to every individual component and collect the metrics that are readily available. Um, yeah, but now we have to run Prometheus, and that's kind of a problem. Uh, not really, but Prometheus is not a microservice. You can't just create a pod and kill it whenever you want to. It's a self application. If you want to, it has persistent storage, it connects to alert management and dashboarding, um, and there's just kind of a bit of stuff to take care of. And this is kind of an entry barrier if you want to get started with Prometheus, especially if you want to, if you have to learn Prometheus itself and then have to see how you can make this all happen within of Kubernetes. And that's why at CoreOS we came up with the operator concept, um, which simply means we take operational domain knowledge of a certain application and express it as source code. And then we make this knowledge accessible to a user of a Kubernetes cluster via third party resources. And this in Prometheus shows as follows. We have a Prometheus resource object, which looks like any other Kubernetes object. So we have a YAML file where you specify uh, the kind, you can add labels, etc. And then the specification just has the basic data about the Prometheus setup we would like to run in our cluster. And the operator now will watch this resource and as soon as you add it, which happens via queue control, as anything else, it will immediately start deploying the appropriate setup and manage its lifecycle for you. And this also means we can now, for example, change the version in our Prometheus resource to 1.3.1, uh, and the operator will automatically take care of doing a safe and disruption-free update of your entire setup. So if you combine the two, we actually have a default way to monitor clusters because all these components we have seen are available in every cluster except for the node exporter and cube state metrics, and these are really easy to deploy. And we now have a component actually allowing us to declare to define how we want to run Prometheus and taking care of anything else. And if you combine that, we can actually come up with a one command deployment of full end to end cluster monitoring, which is, which is basically readily available after like three minutes. And can actually look at how this looks like if it's deployed. So one of the things we of course get is um, a Prometheus setup in general. So here we see the Prometheus UI, um, and you can go to the targets page. And the targets page just uh, shows us all the entities being currently monitored by this Prometheus. As we can see, we're monitoring our single node etcd cluster here. We are monitoring the API server, the scheduler, the controller manager, and every single kubelet. And we also deploy as part of the whole setup process a node export on every node and cube state metrics. And we now have this really well known set of metrics we are getting. And this, because of that, we can also now deploy you, um, provide you uh, with basic alerting on all these different metrics. We know they, ex they exist. Um, so we can see this here. There are actually two uh, correctly configured ones up there. Um, but these are alerts covering etcd itself, kubelets, um, your API server, and all the other components, and they will notify you as soon as any of these components is not behaving as you would expect in a healthy cluster. And the same goes for dashboards, right? Um, we know which metrics exist, and therefore we can now provide you with a Grafana instance, which is also deployed as part of the process, and which comes with a bunch of default dashboards. So here's a dashboard, uh, which gives you an aggregated view of all the uh, nodes belonging to your cluster, so you can see how much free memory of this space there is in total across your entire cluster. And we can also now, of course, drill down. That's an important aspect. Um, and we now have a similar dashboard exposing the same metrics. But we can now, in this drop down here, up there in the left corner, uh, select any node we like. And we will get the same dashboard just showing the metrics for the respective node. And similarly, you can also uh, look at deployments. So here's a dashboard showing for every deployment, which you can select by namespace and name. Uh, it shows you the aggregated resource usage across all pods belonging to this deployment. And also has this um, convenient graph down here where you can observe ongoing warning updates or scalings uh, in real time. So all of this comes with just a single command. Uh, of course, for advanced clusters, you probably need to tweak on two values, but we work on that. Um, but this is actually pretty much complete end-to-end -end monitoring uh, with little effort. But now you also want to monitor your own services, and that's a bit more complicated because the file, they are your own. And um, we don't know on which ports your services expose metrics or whether they do it at all. 
so we can't provide you with a default configuration. But in general, the best per people to actually uh, set up monitoring for service and interpret the data are the people who wrote it and instrumented it. Because who could be more competent uh, to interpret metric data than the person who actually uh, determined it should be there in the first place? So ideally, everyone developing an application and deploying it inside of a cluster would be able to self-service uh, monitoring for this as well. Uh, ideally, monitoring would be, part, would be a cluster feature, which any, anyone can use. So just as people can do their own deployments, they can now also do their own monitoring without ever having to know about how to operate Prometheus or how to configure it to find the appropriate monitoring targets. So the operator kind of handles the part of deploying and operating Prometheus continuously. That's kind of nice. Um, but we need a way to configure uh, for our custom services how they can be monitored. And for that, the operator introduces another, another third-party resource, which we call a service monitor. And the service monitor um, declares for a group of services how they can be monitored in a common way. This is actually pretty straightforward, um, because we can now use Kubernetes idioms to express how we want monitoring to happen. So first of all, we select which services this service monitor should apply to. And we know label selectors from Kubernetes services and position volume claims, for example. So nothing new here if you're familiar with the basic Kubernetes concepts. And then we simply specify that for all these services, um, we can monitor them on the named port called web on the slash metrics endpoint, and we want to scrap these metrics every 30 seconds. And this is just a declarative definition of how should monitoring happen. It doesn't do anything at all, uh, which is a good thing, actually, because now we want to connect it to an actual monitoring system, and we use, again, labels. So we, we label the service monitor with the label tier equals front end, and in case you haven't noticed, it's acting upon all services having the label tier equals front end as well. And then we include this service monitor, again, via label selection in our Prometheus resource. And then we get a full picture looking like this. So we now not only have Prometheus, we also have service monitors. And any Prometheus connects to um, a flexible set of potential service monitors based on label queries. And service monitors, in return, um, connect to a set of services also expressed by labels. So all these relationships are inherently dynamic. So whenever you add a service, it will just automatically uh, fit into the picture without any direct configuration. And now the operator watches both resources and actually also all the relationships between all these components. And it then will, of course, as before, deploy the Prometheus server for you, but will also generate a configuration based on the current cluster state you can see. And as soon as anything about these relationships changes, so you add a new service, you add a new service monitor, you, you modify your service monitor, all these changes will be immediately processed by the operator and it will reconfigure the Prometheus server instantaneously. So what we end up getting is, um, first of all, we have now a full end-to-end -end cluster monitoring where we don't have to worry about um, operating Prometheus itself. And now we also have a definition which clearly separates how should monitoring happen with the actual implementation. And ultimately, this can also allow you in the long run to just rip out Prometheus if you want to and then just plug in your own monitoring system into the existing service monitor structure. So this is really important, I think, like for the future. Um, but essentially, we get this really nice full picture, and we can now configure a full Prometheus setup uh, just using Kubernetes idioms and never having to worry about uh, Prometheus operation and configuration in any way. And all of this is, of course, open source. Uh, it's all in pretty early stages. We're working hard to make it production ready as soon as possible, but we also need you to try it out and give us feedback. So we're really looking forward to that. Okay, that's all I have to show. Thanks for your attention.